So this year, you've been transparent that it hasn't been an ideal start. Um, I actually, I just put out a video where I, I had like two weddings booked for this year. But 10 to 15 is ideally what I want to do, especially locally. What is your plan over the year? Or is it a different plan or is it a similar plan to how you've um, run your business in the past? We're destroying the 180 rule, not 180 shutter, just the like the interview rule. <laughs> yeah. That now there's a shot on me that's from a completely going different back and camera, forth. <laughs> different life balance. It feels very... So how'd you find your, your way into weddings? For me, weddings was an ends to a means. Um, actually, for my full story, I wasn't really a photographer before. I majored in music production, sound design, and I was doing audio post-production on like commercials and TV shows, mainly commercials at a post house. Um, when my wife and I got pregnant with our first child, she wanted to stay home. And at the time I was working at Squarespace and I was like, well, I probably should get another job. And she said, no, you need to start a business. At the time, I was dabbling with photography and people was, oh, you got a good eye. So I was like, maybe I can make a thing out of it. And yeah, I, so I practiced for like a whole year and just jumped right into weddings. That's very cool. And so from, I'm, I'm going to say you're part of a very small percentage of people that that's the way that you entered the market. Yeah. Um, can you talk a little bit about those first few years? Like, how do you go from deciding that you want to run a business and... Uh, and just beginning, because it seems like it's very much like, okay, I, I do this now, how do I? <laughs> yeah, oh my goodness. I don't even know how to explain that. I really just jumped in. I used a lot of services to help me find business, because that's the hardest part when you start is like, you're new, but you need to find couples. So I was doing like Groupon, and I did um, Thumbtack. Thumbtack? Yeah, for a while. And what I would do is I would actually get people in on engagements, through the service and then try and book them for a full wedding, which worked better. <laughs> That's awesome. I did similar thing. Yep. Good inquiries came in. I'd be like, have a engagement session if you like it, book. And then most of them were like, oh, you're that confident in your skills. You're right. not a scammer. <laughs> uh, I'm going to reframe you slightly so there's not a Marriott Salon A. You don't have to move. I'll move around you. Oh, yeah, this is much better. Mmm, yummy. Beautiful. So now, Fast forward many years. What does your business look like to you? Because you run a bit of a unique business, I would say, uh, that there's an educational element as well as a wedding photography element. And uh, what does a perfect balance or a nice balance look like to you? I wish I had a perfect balance. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I do try and I split it, I feel like, about 50-50. Um, because I have five kids, I'm doing 10 to 15 weddings. Um, I actually, I just put out a video where I, I had like two weddings booked for this year, but... Look up, look up. <laughs> but 10 to 15 is ideally what I want to do, especially locally. Um, I used to travel a lot for weddings and it's, it's just too much now. Like I want to be home with the kids mainly. So 10 to 15, maybe 20 weddings. And then the rest of the time is spent doing education stuff. Kind of split it off like that. Yeah. And looking at this year, um, that I guess we should timestamp this with that we're recording this in January. Um, True. So by the time this comes out, maybe you have 45 weddings booked for this year. Oh yeah, because I already, I have like two or three inquiries I just got. I'm talking to someone on like Tuesday, so like, I'm definitely not worried. It'll happen. Yeah. Which is nice. <laughs> um, it is nice to have a bit of a diversification of your business though, to know that if something's not going amazingly well, that there are other things you can do. Um, I found that a lot with, uh, especially over like 2020, that our weddings in Canada at least kind of disappeared. And all of a sudden I was doing a lot of restaurant photography and commercial photography all of a sudden. Um, so it's nice to, to have that diversification. And what, what are your thoughts on, should somebody niche down, if you want to be a wedding photographer, should you only be a wedding photographer? Or would that be potentially negative advice? I think when I, when I first started, I was very much a niche down person, but no, um, diversifying your skills a bit is definitely worth it. And again, maybe you shouldn't have a site that says like, I do everything, split your websites up. But even in my case, which is a great example, is if I wasn't doing education as well, this would be a huge problem for me that I have no weddings booked. And then I would be trying to do 
real estate or something like real estate would be great in my area because everyone's moving there. Um, so yeah, I highly, highly recommend either that or practice and learn video. Like that's probably one of the biggest things you could ever do. Even you, you hybrid shoot all the time. Um, same thing I know for me with the couple of Fujis, they have like a record button. So you can be like, snap, 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 record. And snap, 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 record. And the, my, this turned off because you hit one of the, the, the audible keywords. Shoot, I don't know what it is. Stop, one of them. <laughs> so I you, got one of, you got one of them. <laughs> So, um, to speak a little bit about your wedding business uh, specifically, so this year you've been transparent that it hasn't been an ideal start. What is your plan over the year? Or is it a different plan or is it a similar plan to how you've um, run your business in the past? I think the, the main difference is focusing on advertising. Um, in the past, I was always worried to advertise. I feel like when you start, you're always like, oh, I don't want to spend money. You feel like a failure to be like, oh, I have to not yeah. grow this organically. And then I sit down and I think, there's companies that pay like literal billions just to get a 30 on the Super Bowl. So like, why can I not pay a little? Also, it's a percentage thing, right? You know, they, they pay a billion, but for them, that's like 10% of marketing budget. Great. Um, and it brings in 90% of their income or something. So same difference. I'm leaning into advertising more. I'm also doing that too because since I started my business in New York, I, I guess I'm still SEO'd well up there. So I get booked up there all the time. And again, I have five kids. I don't want to go up there anymore because <laughs> it turns into a whole three-day thing. So I'm really trying to hit North Carolina and just stay local. Um, that's a big part in just leaning into like local advertising too. So not paid advertising, but just word of mouth. Maybe may wedding expos. I, I've done a couple, but I, I feel some kind of way about them. <laughs> yeah, so uh, maybe let's talk about your, your, so your strategies. Um, for, for, let's talk about paid ads maybe specifically first. Mm -hmm. Are you, what's gonna be your process for setting that up? Is it to test to see if it works for you or is it, you, do you already have a plan? Yeah, I think it's mainly testing. Um, I'm gonna focus, I think, on Google Ads, which I'm still, that's so confusing for me, so I'm gonna <laughs> try and get better at that. And then um, I like Instagram boosting, especially because you can really niche in on who you're trying to hit. So I think I'm gonna focus on specific venues that I like to shoot at, and then use posts from when I've shot at those venues and boost those. And then I'm also gonna do local magazine slash online stuff as well. Very nice. I like um, YouTube, or not YouTube, uh, Meta, so for, face, for Facebook and Instagram. Over the past, uh, this started, I'm gonna say maybe in December, um, their Advantage Plus campaign. Yeah. So I used to be very adamant of like, I set up every single detail myself, everything is manual. And now I'm letting Meta kind of, it knows who I want to be in front of. And I've had significantly better results, like just allowing it a little bit more ability to do its own thing. Um, and it seems to be doing really well. Uh, one thing that I specifically noticed was that I used to target um, typically like engaged females within a certain age bracket. And now on Instagram, it's a lot easier to target anyone looking for, that's like planning a wedding. So that could be a maid of honor, that could be a mother of the bride, that could be a groom, that could be the groom's best friend, that could be anyone. Um, and now you're just getting the share. So rather than advertising maybe directly to your client, which is like really challenging because it's such a tiny window when somebody gets engaged to when they book a photographer, maybe that's, uh, in some cases it's like a year, but a lot of time it's like maybe four weeks. Um, so yeah, thumbs up to, to new tools. Yeah. Especially when it's coming from like a friend or something, you know, it's much better than them seeing it and being like, oh, that's cool versus like best man or somebody's like, oh bro, check this out. Yeah. Oh wow. You almost get like that, like a status seal of approval yeah. by getting the share because it kind of tracks their, their friendship, I guess, mm -hmm. rather than just being like a random paid ad. Yeah, so you'll you trust someone you know more than me being like, hey, I have great business, you know? Yeah. And uh, so outside of paid ads, you're talking a little bit of magazines, or I guess that is still paid. 
Yeah, um, still paid. Have you exper exper experimented with magazines in the past, or is this a, a new thing for you? This is new for me. Um, there's one local magazine that I know, and they're fairly big in the area, so I was like, you know what? And they give you like a digital online platform as well. So I was like, let me go ahead and lean in with them. I know a lot of their big planners, um, a lot of the venues in the area use them as well. So I was like, it makes sense. And hopefully, if it all works out, I might be able to get on the 2025 cover or something like that, so. Yeah, from my experience with magazines, it's the more involved you wanna be. Yeah. The more they're gonna, they're gonna pump you along as well, that if yep. you're a huge champion of the magazine, and you're doing these nice style shoots for to make them look good. Yep. They yeah, it's, like it's a very like you scratch my back. Yeah. So like, yeah, you pay them to advertise, but then they're like, hey, we need content. And you come through with, you know, the beautiful photos and then they're like, John's amazing. And next yeah. thing you know, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm hoping on. Because again, that actually that feeds both sides of my business. Because when they need style shoots and they set them up for me and then I bring cameras and so now I have YouTube content. And yeah, so that's. That's kind of the push for everything is two birds with one stone or however you'd like to say that. <laughs> I like that. And even if you're like, if you're listening or watching and you're not interested in getting into wedding educate or wedding photography education specifically, to have that behind the scenes stuff. You talked about yes. this at Canada Photo Summit. My goodness. That it's, it's huge. I actually, I just, um, if y'all check out my website, I have like a little short, just a video, like a looping clip right beside the like, you know, it's like, your hero photos, and then it's like, hi, it's me. Um, I put a little video there. And how was I able to do that? All the B-roll from all the weddings I shot of either me in the frame taking pictures of photos or just the couples themselves. It, it, it's easy to do that too. Slap it together real quick in iMovie or something. Yeah, and I think the more that AI becomes more reality, the more you can show an authentic behind the scenes, the more trust you're gonna build as well, which, um, I, it's something I guess I've been doing behind the scenes for so long and I was a huge champion of promotional videos in like actually 2008 and I'm like 2009 everyone's gonna have them you got to get on this now yep. and then it's 2024 20, now and promotional videos aren't really yeah. some people have them but I would say that's like one of the big things like if you start getting that behind the scenes content you have a lot of options so you can build social exactly. content from it because um, no social platforms right now really want still images, sadly. Yeah. And you can complain and be upset about that or you can just play the game. And the game is kind of your business as well, yeah. so. It's not even that hard either. Like, looking at it at this point, you could shoot log on the iPhone, have a friend literally take a five second clip and then show the picture after. That's it, 10 second reel. Yay, snap, snap, picture, that's it. That's, it's, it can be fun also. Yeah. The, a new way to think about your work. Um, it definitely has, an, has social and this content, has this influenced your work at all? Imaging USA is falling apart in the background. Um, has this influenced you at all in your work? I know that I shoot way more vertical now and like mm -hmm. consciously that I'm like, oh, this needs to be vertical because that's gonna fit social media a little bit better. Yeah. Um... No, I'm, I'm still bad about that because <laughs> I always get home and I'm like, oh, I have no photos I can use for this. Um, I actually, I just, I think Imagine did a like your year in review type thing and it was like 80, 85% horizontal photos. Like I, I rarely shoot vertical at all. Um, I wish I did though because yeah, every time I'm like, let me make a little reel because I got two second clips. Oh, no photos. And you're like, Gotta stack three of them. Yeah. Make them really widescreen. And, <laughs> and that's all you can do. Yeah, it's the worst. And I mean, like, I've been shooting with the GFX a lot recently. So every now and then, if I shot wide enough, it's like, great, I can just crop it however, because it's 100 megapixels or whatever. But yeah, I, I haven't shot enough vertical. I have found, though, what has changed for me is just taking clips at the wedding. So I'll literally take my phone out and just shoot a couple things. Because I found, I'm not really good at reels, but I found it if you at least have the content, you can go back and be like, oh, I have an idea how I can use that. And then, you know, add a voiceover after the fact, add some pictures to it, rather than just not recording anything at all. And then just being lost and like, oh, I can't make anything, so. Yeah, and those clips, like you can use them over and over again, that you can use them in, in that first reel that you build. And then you can use them as a year in review, or you can use them as like a 10 best barn wedding venues. and. Yeah. 
I don't know, Toronto. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of ways to use this clip, so please, please start doing it. Uh, what else does advertising and generating leads look like for you in this year? Uh, I think, yeah, it's mainly advertising. I want to do more local word of mouth stuff. Like I said, maybe wedding expos, but I don't, I don't feel like doing all that again. And unfortunately, wedding expos tend to be very cattle cally. So if, if you're not looking to drop your prices or do like some kind of crazy deal, it's not always worth it. Um, now, if you're getting started, they're great. It's a great way to get into the area. And what I feel like usually happens, especially if your prices are not too low for the market, but like a decent rate, wedding expos are like hands down the best way to kind of get into your market. That's, that's how I got in, because I moved from New York to North Carolina and did wedding expos and blew up. Um, and I think that's my main focus, SEO. SEO is a big one. Um, because I got a, I got a switch from New York. I don't know why I keep getting. I just got a New York inquiry the other day. <laughs> they're like, yeah, six hours. We only want reception. I'm like, you realize I'm in North Carolina, right? And they're like, yeah, great. Let's meet tomorrow and talk about it. And I was like, okay. It's the opposite. <laughs> I feel like everyone. <laughs> I feel like everyone wants to be a destination, like on the road doing weddings, and then you're just like, no, no, no. I wanna, I wanna work at home here. And I live close to it, but like, I live 15 minutes from downtown Raleigh, and there's like at least five to six venues. I actually, I live almost a bike ride from a venue that I've never shot at. And I drive by it every day and I'm like, I've never gotten increase here. Like what, it's like my wife could drop me off and come get me because it's close enough to just be like, hello. Just dance home. <laughs> yeah, like I could walk home. It'd be a long walk, but I could. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, well, um, I think we'll wrap it up there. And uh, where can people go to find out more about you? You can find me on the internet at jbivphotography.com or the same jbiv photography for YouTube, Instagram, so on and so forth. Amazing. Well, enjoy Imaging USA. Yeah. <laughs> day, day zero. The only time that John will have any, any oh moments. Oh my goodness. I'm so busy. <laughs> At least we're on the same time zone. Usually we're like in Vegas and I'm like, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> Where am I going? I thought we were on a different time zone. <laughs> so... I was like doing my camera like, oh God, what's gonna happen to me? And I was like, wait a minute. We're in the same side. What's wrong with oh, you? Awesome. Cool. Thanks, dude. <laughs>